Hey guys. It's this is Matt Granger, that Nikon guy for mattgranger.com. Today I wanted to run through exposure and help everyone understand exactly how exposure works and give you a little analogy I use that may help you conceptualize it. So if you want to get the most out of your DSLR and get out of auto mode, you really need to understand exposure. And getting out of auto mode isn't about you know snobbery about those who know how to use their camera in manual and those who don't. There's a world of creative options available by adjusting your aperture and shutter speed that you are handing over to the camera if you leave the camera in auto mode. So that's a great reason to learn it. Firstly, to, you need to understand that cameras are shooting for a neutral gray. So way back, years, decades ago, I think it was Kodak went out and analyzed thousands and thousands of images and came up with a neutral gray, which is the average of all the different scenes they analyzed. So that's what your camera is generally aiming for. Now they're getting smarter about it, but basically they're aiming to bring the overall amount of light in your image back to that gray because in experience that'll get it right. But your camera doesn't know if you're pointing your camera at a black cat at night or a polar bear in the snow. Now that's because one of them should be really dark and have not a lot of detail in it and the other one should be really bright. But your camera doesn't know the difference and it will bring them both back to grey. So the polar bear will be too dark and the cat will be too bright. So you need to take that into account when you're exposing your image. So there's no precise, exact, uh, correct exposure for shots. Um, what I think is great for a scene you may think is over or under and vice versa. And depending on the type of scene, they'll require completely different settings. Some you might have your camera, you, it's telling you to expose it something and you need to expose one, two, three, four, five stops under or above that to get the scene looking how you want it to. So the analogy I have to help with uh, exposure is that it's like filling a glass of water from the tap. Now I'll get back to the end to, to that at the end of this video to explain what I mean <clears throat> what I mean by that. So with your exposure, you have three main things that you can play with. First of all, uh, you've got your ap aperture, shutter speed, and your ISO or ASA if you're using film. Exposure is measured in stops. Basically, each stop doubles or halves the amount of light that gets to your sensor or film. So three stops is eight times the difference because you're doubling, then doubling, then doubling again for each stop. Now, aperture is determined by your lens and it's limited by the type of lens that you have. It's essentially how big the opening at the front of your lens is. And uh, it's actually a 1 over, so when you see 2.8, it's actually 1 over 2.8. So the smaller the number, the bigger the opening. So f4 is a lot bigger than f8 or f16. Does that make sense? Have a look at this. This shows um, the different apertures as a diagram, and each of these does represent a full stop. So moving from f2.8 to f4, you're halving the amount of light and so on and so forth all the way through. Okay, so here I've got my 85mm 1.4 lens on my D700 to show you uh, different apertures as they actually look as the light's coming through. So here we go. First off, this is at f16. So you can see how small the hole is there that's how much light you're actually letting through when you open the shutter. Okay. Now let's drop it back to F11. So you can see already quite a big difference. Now F8, which is kind of a classic aperture, uh, photojournalism standard. Okay, bring it back to f5.6. A lot bigger. Now let's step back to f2.8, which is uh, a classic because a lot of the pro lenses max out at that. Okay, so you can see we're way bigger now than we were at f16. Let's drop that back even further to f2. 
Okay, so there we've already doubled the light from f2.8 to f2. And now let's max it all the way out at 1.4. And you probably won't even see this because the blades just protrude the tiniest bit on the sides. So that shows you just how big a difference the, the apertures are in terms of the amount of light you're letting through. Okay, next up is shutter speed, and shutter speed's quite obvious, it's how long the sensor or film is exposed to light. And you can hear that when you take a shot on a lower shutter speed, you'll hear the snap snap as the shutter opens and then closes, or on a really fast uh, shutter speed you won't, you'll just hear the one. Um, on a camera like the professional one, they range from one eight thousandth of a second all the way through to 30 seconds, and then bulb where you can have it as long as you like. Um, in terms of stops, uh, ev it's just mathematics. So every time you double the amount of time, you double the amount of light. So half a second has half as much light as one second. It's that simple. Um, as well as creative purposes, you need to be careful below around 1 60th of a second because you can introduce handshake into the shot and then you obviously need to adjust your shutter speed to how fast whatever you're shooting is moving if you want to freeze the action or for the amount of blur that you want to let into the shot. And finally, ISO, or ASA as it was called, is how sensitive the film or sensor is to light. So most Nikon DSLRs have a base ISO of 200, then they can go up to 1600 and you're up to 100,000 extendable. Uh, basically your, your base ISO range, which could be for example 200 to 3200, that's what the camera's rated at. And all the ones where you can extend above that, like high one, two, three, they're actually putting extra charge through the sensor to make it additionally sensitive to light. Um, and you'll get a lot more digital noise in there. Uh, even at the top end of your base range, you get more noise. Basically, the lower you are, the less noise you'll have um, based on the base number that you have on your camera. And it's the same in film. As you go up through ASA, your films get grainier and you know it's a less fine, smooth print. Uh, so where possible, stick low. Now, my analogy of filling a glass with water is the same as filling your shot with enough light. So, correct exposure depends on your shot, but that relates to the size of your cup, in my analogy. Okay, so think of aperture as being equal to the size of the pipes. The bigger your pipes, or aperture, the more water, or light, can flow through it at any given time. So that's that part of the equation. The second part is shutter speed, and that's how long you leave the tap running. So the longer you leave the tap running, the more water can come out based on the size of the pipes. Clear enough? Same with the light. The longer you leave it on, the more light can stream through your lens and enter the filter, oh, sorry, hit your sensor or hit your film. So again, more exposure. And the ISO, or the ASA, you can think of as the water pressure. So if it's up really high, loads of water or light will be collected by the camera or the cup, in my analogy. So you can see that by varying any one of these, you need to vary another or both of the others to maintain your exposure. So if you move from 1 50th of a second to 1 100th of a second, you're leaving the shutter open half as long and you're letting in half as much light. So you can correct that by doubling your uh, the amount of light coming through by opening up your aperture one stop, say f4 to f2.8, or by doubling your ISO from 200 to 400, for example. Or you can do a combination of both so it nets out. Okay, so that's fairly clear. Um, and of course, depending on what you're wanting to do, you may need to under or overexpose. So if you are in manual mode as opposed to aperture or shutter priority, you could just adjust one of those three elements down or up to get the, the amount of under or over exposure to what your camera says you actually need. Now, as I said before, aperture and shutter speed can be used very effectively for creative purposes and you really want to master it so that you can achieve that. So check out some of my other videos that are uh, up that explain shutter speed and, uh, and aperture in more detail and give you some example images of what you can do there. 
I hope um, that's been of some use to you. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment or give me a thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. And if you have any requests for videos you'd like to see made, please let me know. This has been Matt Granger, that Nikon guy for mattgranger.com. See you later.